Right, so I'm going to set up the elements I need to start creating my explosion. Um, I'm going to make a platonic solid here. Um, and I'm using one of these rather than the spheres. I just quite like the way that you get an even distribution of vertices. And um, I'm going to put it to a octahedron and put it up to three subdivisions. So you can see these vertices that later on will have an influence on how the explosions is emitted from this. So it's sort of quite nice to have an even layout of them rather than, you know, with a sphere where they can be all pinched at the top there. Um, so I'm just going to move it up a bit. And I'm just going to go to the vertices. I'm just going to select this lot here. Go around a few of those, get rid of them. Um, and I'm just going to scale those sort of flat and then move them up. So we've got this sort of dome that's going to sort of emit out of sort of fluid. Um, um, not fluid, the explosion. And I'm going to call that emitter. And then I'm going to make a plane which will be my sort of floor, which I'll use as a collider. And I'm going to scale that up to 20 by 20. So that's pretty much all the geometry I'm going to use. Um, so let's open up the Bifrost graph here. Yeah, so that's Windows, Bifrost graph. I'm going to bring this over. And when you open it, this is what you see. So you've got this sort of thing here. It says create graph. So I'm going to click on that. And we get by default these inputs and an output, and that's it. So I'm just going to delete that input actually because we don't need it at the moment. And we're just going to middle mouse drag in my emitter and my floor, which will be my collider. Um, what I might do is I might set this up a bit because I've only got the one screen to work on. Um, I've got a setting here, I think I made one by Frost single monitor. Let's just do that. Right, so um, you could just drag these out and place them where you want, but I've, I've sort of done it before, so I've just done a quick setup. Um, so my graph disappeared, but if you can just click on this plus, you can go by graph one, and that will come back. So I've now got my emitter and my floor and my output. So you can, um, as I said before, or what did I mention it before, you can use the Bifrost browser to get some samples and start working from them. I find them a bit confused when I first started, so um, I'm sort of just gonna go through it from, from the beginning and just make all my own nodes. Um, so what do we need? We need, to start off with, we need a air source or a source air. So that's going to that's basically going to be our emitter. Then we need a fuel source fuel, and that's where we're going to get our explosive properties from. Um, we need to simulate that. So we're, I'm going to go simulate. Uh, and I want to simulate aero, so this is where all the simulation happens. Um, I'm going to need a collider for my floor, so that's a collider there, like that. And I'm going to need, let's bring this over a bit more at the moment. I'm going to need a um, aero settings. Aero, sorry, I spelled that wrong. Aero solver settings. Like that, and I'm going to use a adaptivity as well, so we can sort of work on keeping the sort of file sizes down and working on that using those. And I'm going to need a combustion settings, combustion settings like that. So these are the basics of it. So we've got source air that's where we admit things like uh, fog density and temperature and we give our emitter speeds and things like that or we can inherit velocities off objects then it goes into this fuel 
uh, and this is where the fuel is and you have these settings for how much oxygen is in the fuel and how quickly it burns and then we've got our simulate our aero this doesn't really have any settings um, and this is where the simulation takes place inside that but we can access the solver settings using this other node which you can see here has quite a few settings in it and this is where we saw our scene units in meters um, and we have a collider and we have some combustion settings and we have our aero adaptivity so we can sort of work on trying to keep file sizes down and simulation speeds high uh, by making things a little bit, a bit more streamlined um, so first thing we need to do we drag out the mesh from our emitter shape and put that into the geometry of our source air then we go from the source air to the source fuel and you can see it says source air to get that in there then we drag our fuel source into our sources of our simulate aero then we're going to put our solver settings into the settings of that one then we're going to do our combustion settings into the combustion settings of our aero solver and we're just going to plug in our adaptivity to our simulate aero and then we have here our collider so we're going to put the floor into the geometry of the collider and the collider into the input of colliders for our simulate aero so we have that so that's the basic structure this is where you're going to be emitting here um, we can make little backdrops for these so I'm just gonna select those and go create backdrop this is where we have all our settings for how our simulation will be computed here make another little backdrop for that this is where our colliders are so we can make another backdrop for that and this one I'm just going to leave separately at the moment um, and I'm going to turn it off just for the time being um, and then we've got where we simulate so I plug that into here like so we've now connected the whole simulation so we've got an input and we're outputting it back into Maya and then when you make that connection you get this BIF which is the Bifrost sort of object in the Maya world and you can see here we've also got the Bifrost graph here as well um, so with that done if I just make this 100 frames if I hit play we get this which isn't very exciting and you might not even be able to see it but you're getting a very mild sort of dark mist rising upwards um, and this is coming from our source air so we have some in our source air we have these properties um, I'll go through them all in a bit I won't do them just yet I'm just going to get setting up this sort of structure so we can sort of see the explosion and then I'll go through all those settings um, but this here is what we're seeing is this fog density which is 2.5 we actually want that at zero because we're going to control fog and smoke using the soot properties of our combustion settings so turn that off and we now get oops rewind you have to rewind and then start uh, get literally nothing so why is that um, well there's a couple of things one you can't visualize the uh, sort of explosion in the viewport unless you've applied a volume material to the simulation so let's do that so after our simulation we are going to make a all right, tab I want an assign material like so I'm just going to leave that there I'll zoom in and have a look at that um, and I'm just going to open up the hypershade and I am going to go to the Arnold 
shaders and just make a standard volume like so. I'm just going to give it another name, just call it explosion. explosion. And I'm going to middle mouse drag that into here. You have to wait, think about it a little bit, and then it does it. Just minimize that. So I'm going to plug this material reference out into the volume material. Then I'm going to unplug this for the time being, and I'm going to plug the aero volume into geometry, and then plug the aero volume of the out geometry back into my output. Um, and then let's move. Sorry, I'll drag the bumper thing over. Uh, and then I'm going to hit play. And we get nothing. So that is because we need to let me just stop this. We need to tell the volume shader. I'm just going to unhide DAG object so I can see my volume shader. Um, and bring out my attribute editor. Oops. Um, we need to tell it what channels to look at from the coming out of Bifrost that will be controlling things like density for the smoke. Um, temperature and um, heat for the black body. Um, what I've done is I've made a couple of presets up here um, just to stop, so I don't have to keep writing them in all the time and I got these from opening up a couple of these uh, examples and sort of saving out the material aspect of that. Um, so I'm just going to do that now. I'm just going to go preset, explosion material, go replace. And what it does is it puts in the Bifrost uh, channels that we need. So for density, we need a channel called voxel underscore fog density. Um, scatter doesn't have anything. Transparency doesn't have anything. Black body, we need voxel temperature. And for temperature, we need voxel temperature as well. So emission, voxel temperature, and temperature is voxel temperature as well. So that's voxel underscore. Um, but I'd recommend just opening up one of these examples and saving out these presets and get start get, get you started. So if you having to keep writing these out all the time. Um, so fingers crossed. If I hit rewind and play, we still get nothing. And this brings us to my next bit, and that's because to get an explosion. Our fuel has an ignition temperature, and our air has a temperature, which is 250, and our fuel temperature is 580. We also have a temperature down here, which is the ambient temperature, which is 20. That's in our solver settings. So at the moment, because my fuel temperature is a lot higher than my source air, nothing's happening. There is no explosion happening. So I'm just going to make this. Uh, so what's our source there? It's 580. I'm just going to make this 700. I'm just going to change the rate for the temperature mode to set. Can think about it. Move this over. And now hit play. And we get that. So we're now getting the explosion happening. It's very low res and not very exciting. Um, so that's the basic setup you need to actually sort of get it going. Um, just run out and rerun through all that very quickly. So let me just open this, uh, undock this. I mean, uh, come on, I've got it locked. Let's make it full frame. So we drag in, little mouse drag in our geometry we want to be emitter and the geometry we want to be our collider. Um, we link the emitter to our source air, then we link the source air to our fuel and we plug that into the sources of our simulate. Then we plug the floor into a collider, collider into the colliders of the simulate aero. 
we've added the settings, which we're not going to do anything with it just yet. And we've added narrow adaptivity, which we're not going to do anything with yet. And to be able to see what's going on, we've put an assign material. We middle mouse dragged in the shader from the hyper shade. Um, and we gave it voxel underscore fog underscore density to be the color of the smoke and voxel temperature for our mission and our temperature so we can see it in the viewport and obviously render it. Um, and then our final thing we did to get going was we had to make our source air be above our ignition temperature. And then that's where we get seeing this. So that's a very basic aspect of it starting. Um, so in the next videos, we'll start working on how we can make this a bit more exciting than just a large yellow mushroom.